All right, so today we're going to be talking about binomial probabilities. Uh, specifically, we're going to start with uh, what a binomial experiment is. Uh, binomial means two. Bi means two. Um, binomial experiment would be an experiment, a uh, probability experiment, where there are only two possible outcomes, and, and that those outcomes would be a success or a failure. Um, something like an experiment where I'm picking cards out of a deck and I want to know if I get a diamond. Um, either I'm going to get a diamond, that would be a success, or I don't get a diamond, that's a failure. So when you have binomial experiments, um, there are some characteristics that we have that you can recognize um, that is a binomial experiment, and the first of these, and, and you can follow along in your book, you can use your book as a supplement for this, but um, basically the first characteristic would be that um, the experiment is repeated for a fixed number of trials. Repeated for a fixed number of trials. Um, Secondly, there can only be two possible outcomes of the experiment, and that would be a success or a failure. So two outcomes. We're, we're going to call the success, we'll label that as S, and a failure, we'll label that as F. Third, um, the probability for success must be the same for each trial. probability of success must be the same for each trial and let me comment on that for a second let's let's go back to our card experiment uh, if I'm trying to figure out um, do I get a diamond when I pull a card out of the deck um, Success would be that I get a diamond, a failure is I don't get a diamond. I must replace the card. If I don't replace the card, then the probability for success, uh, success actually changes as you go through the experiment. So you have to be putting that card back in in order for the probabilities to be the same. Uh, fourth, the random variable, which we're going to call x, the random variable x um, counts uh, the number of successful trials. I don't know why there's a fifth bullet point here. There's only four characteristics of a binomial experiment. Um, okay, so those are the characteristics. Now, a little bit on the notation. Um, we're going to be using these variables quite a bit as we go through this. Uh, let's start with P. P is going to be the probability of success. Q is going to be the probability of failure. N is going to be the number of trials. And X is going to be the number of successes in N trials. Okay, so let's go through this uh, first example together just to kind of make sure you got an idea of how this works. Um, what you're going to have to do with these examples is you're going to have to first determine if it is a binomial experiment. So if it holds those four characteristics. If it's not, then you don't answer the NPQX. But if it is, you should be able to answer that. So um, Alana Coy, she was a basketball player for our team last year, makes her three-point shots 80% of the time. She stands at the three-point line and shoots five times. The random variable represents the number of baskets made. Is this a binomial experiment? If so, identify the, the values. Uh, this is a binomial experiment because there are only two outcomes. Um, she either makes the basket or she doesn't make the basket. Um, N, uh, which is the number of trials, that's going to be 5. Uh, the probability of success is going to be 0.8. The probability of failure, Q, is going to be 0.2. You could think of that as 1 minus 0.8. Um, and then X, which is the number of success, uh, the number of successes in the trials. Well, let's see. She could either, when she's shooting the basket, she could either make zero baskets. She can make one, two, three, four, 
or five baskets. So that's that's how that works. Okay, you're going to go ahead and pause the, the video now, and then I'm going to let you and your classmates go through uh, numbers two through five, and then we'll check back in to get some answers. Okay, so you've had some time to go through these. Let's, let's see how you did. Um, for number two, it is binomial. Um, you're repeating the experiment four times, the probability of success. Okay, so this is going to be one out of four uh, because it's a diamond. So there, there's actually, it's actually 13 out of 52, uh, which reduces down to, to one-fourth, which means probability of failure has to be three-fourths. And um, uh, th then the number of diamonds that I could pick from the deck, it could be zero, one, two, three, or four diamonds. There is a possibility that I pick zero diamonds. All right, number two, or number three, and four. There are your answers there. I got three not to be a binomial experiment. Hopefully you got the same thing, because this is the key right here, without replacement. Um, when you don't replace the marbles, the probabilities of success change continuously. Uh, number four, multiple choice quiz has five questions, so n is equal to five. You have three choices, so you have one one third of a chance of getting it correct, one out of three. That means two out of three is failures. Um, you can guess zero, one, two, three, four, or five questions correctly. And then here's the last one. Hopefully that this is making sense to you. Okay, now let's go and calculate some of these probabilities. This is going to lead to something a little bit bigger, but... Um, if we go back to that five question quiz and, and we want to find the probability that we would guess exactly three correct, um, that means I have to have three successes and two failures to get exactly three. The order doesn't matter on this, um, so we're talking about a combination. So here are all the possible ways that I could get three correct. Um, that's it. There's there's ten different possibilities. I, I can I can think of this as being five. Choose three. I got five questions. Five questions. I need to get three of them correct. So five choose three. Um, when we do that on the calculator, uh, that's going to be ten. Well, it should be ten because this is ten right here. You guys can double check that, but I'm pretty sure five choose three is going to be ten. Okay. So now, if we actually want to calculate the probability. Um, from what we've been doing before um, to get exactly three correct. Well, let's see. Um, for the first question, I'd have to get, I have a one-third chance of getting it correct. The second question, one-third chance to get it correct. Third question, one-third chance out of getting it correct. So those are my three correct answers. The, the remaining two must be incorrect. I have a two-thirds chance of getting them incorrect. So these are my incorrect answers. But I can mix those up ten different ways. So I got to take this whole thing times ten. Um, and when you do that, well, I don't know what you get. But you should get. I don't know. You guys can calculate it out and see what you get. All right. So I pulled up my calculator here, and um, I just want to calculate this to see what we get. So if I take ten times one third, that's going to be raised to the three third power, uh, times two thirds, and that's squared. What does that give me? Point, point one six is the probability that I get them all correct. Okay, what's the point of doing all this? Well, in a binomial experiment, um, we have a formula here that allows us to calculate these probabilities, and and for me, this formula seems a little bit easier to use than to actually go through the, the probability calculation every single time. So if we were to use this formula, the probability of, of, of x, right, the probability of getting 1 correct, or the probability of getting 2 correct, or 3 correct, um, it's going to be n choose x times p to the x power times q to the n minus x. So if we use this formula to see if this, it's, it's going to be the same thing we just calculated, basically. Um, uh, the n choose x is going to be 5 choose 3 uh, times 
the probability of a, of a success is one-third. That's going to be raised to the x power, in this case x is 3. The probability of failure is two-thirds, and that's going to be to the 5 minus 3 power. That's the second power. And so you should get the exact same number, 0.16. All right, so now I'm going to pause the tape again, and I'm going to let you go through, use the formula to calculate the probability of getting zero questions correct, one, two. We've already done three. That's 0.16, four, and five. And then uh, come back to the tape. All right, so hopefully if things went well, um, these are the numbers you got. Uh, if not, pause the tape again, talk to your classmates, see if you can figure out what went right or what went wrong. Um, all right, let's keep going here. The probability of answering either two or four of uh, uh, questions correctly. So the probability of two or four. So that's going to be the probability of two plus the probability of four uh, minus the probability of two and four, which is not possible. Uh, that can't happen. So this is just going to be 0.33 plus point zero four, uh, which is point three seven. All right, you can't, this, this is not possible. You can't answer two and four questions correctly. They're mutually exclusive. Um, probability of at answering at least one question correctly. We haven't spent a lot of time on the words at least one, but I want you to think about it this way. Um, if I'm answering at least one correctly, that means I can get one correct, two, three, four, or five correct. So basically, it's the probability of one plus the probability of two plus dot, 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 the probability of answering all five. Um, so that, I just add up all those numbers. So that's 0.32 plus 0 0.33 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.004, uh, and I think that gives you 0.854, so 85% chance of getting at least one correct. Um, make, a, make kind of a mental note about that at least question, because we haven't really done too much with it. All right, um, next, create a histogram. I'm going to let you do this on your own, um, create that histogram. Uh, you guys have enough uh, ex experience with that. However, uh, we want to come back to what shape is this. So I'm going to give you a few seconds, pause the tape, create your histogram, and then see if you can decide on, on what the shape is. Your, your choices are going to be uh, skewed left, uh, skewed right, or symmetrical. All right, I'll pause and then come back. All right, so here's my brief sketch of a histogram. Um, I kind of drew it a little bit off scale. I didn't even put one on here because the probabilities were so low. And we can see here, when we look at the shape, this is definitely skewed right. You can see the tail of this thing over here. Um, so we're looking at a, at a distribution that's skewed right. And I want you to make a mental note here. The probability of success for this problem was one-third. Um, the probability of actually getting a question right was one-third. Um, this probability, the probability of success here, or the p-value, is less than 50 percent. And whenever a probability um, whenever the probability of a success is less than 50%, you're going to get a, a distribution, a histogram that is skewed to the right. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. Moving on. Here are some formulas now to find the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution. This is, you know, you can still do it the way that we've been discussing with a probability distribution, right? You, you can still do that, but these just make the calculations a little bit easier. Um, when you only have two outcomes, success and failure, the, the calculations, we're not going to show you exactly where these come from, but they're just, they're easier to use. All these formulas will be given to you. You don't have to memorize anything. Um, so just kind of take a note of those formulas. Okay, so let's go through this example and then we'll start wrapping this thing up. Um, 
Microfracture knee surgery has a 75% chance of success on patients.